And we are about to enter our last section of chapter 9, Powers and Roots of Complex Numbers. So we're going to look at uh, two different things, taking powers of a complex number and then roots. So if we took a complex number, say 3 plus 5i, and I asked you to square it, one way you could do it would be to foil it out, just keeping it in rectangular form. A little bit of, um, little bit of work, and you end up with the complex number negative 16 plus 30i. Piece of cake, no problem. But what if I took that same complex number and said, hey, what's the 20th power? There's no way we would want to do that. So one easy way is to turn it into its polar form. Now its polar form is going to have an r and a theta, and we know that we could write it in r cosine theta. So let's just keep it in general and square it, which means we'd have to foil that out. And we won't always have to do this, but just stay with me on this one. We learned in class yesterday that if you want to multiply complex numbers, you can just multiply the r's and add the angles. Cleaning up all that mess, we end up with r squared cosine 2 theta plus i sine of 2 theta. And we notice that there's 2's in there. And then we were taking it to the second power. If we do the exact same thing with the third power, and I won't write it all out, but it turns out that it's r cubed and the 3 theta and 3 theta, and there's no um, big surprise because we're taking it to the third power. So a really smart guy a long time ago named De Moivre, I believe he's French, Abraham De Moivre, said, hey, this works out, and he proved it. If you take a polar complex number to an nth power, all you have to do is take r to the n and multiply theta by n, and you get the correct. So if I looked at a real quick example, if I, if I gave you a... Uh, polar form, 3 cosine 30 sine 30, and took it to the third power. You take 3 to the third power, you multiply the 30 by 3, and you can see you end up with 27i. So that's the powers of complex numbers. Now there's an interesting side note here. If we took Euler's constant, E, 2.718281388, there it is. Euler came up with a famous identity, uh, or, or his formula, which can be proven using sum of infinite series. I will show you this next chapter, but he, he showed that e to the xi equals cosine x plus i sine of x. Well, if you swap out x for pi, you end up with e to the pi i equals cosine of pi plus i sine of pi. And if you simplify that, you end up with e to the pi i equals negative 1. Slide that around and you get e to the pi i plus 1 equals 0, and you've tied together all five of the greatest numbers in the universe. More on that later. Second half of the section talks about roots of complex numbers. So if I had 4 plus 3i and I wanted the third root of it, I could write it like that. Why would we want to do such a thing? Let's pretend we had an equation, say x to the fifth equals 1. We know from earlier in the year that there should be five solutions, five roots. So if I take the fifth root of each side, piece of cake, I get one answer. But that's only one root. Where are the heck are the other four? And the second half of this section really shows us how we can find the other four. Now, this requires a little bit of work. I'm just going to show you how it can be done uh, here right now. If you take any complex number and want to find the, the, the pth root, so there's a formula for it. The formula looks god-awful, looks really complicated, um, but it allows for you to find all of the roots that you're looking for. So I'm going to jot down the formula here. If you want to copy it down, great, but this is kind of one of the things we're going to start off with tomorrow in class. One of the things I want to notice is that there are several n values, and the n's actually are the key to giving you all the roots that you're looking for. That's where we'll start on tomorrow.